So Mark, I appreciate you taking some time here at VZ Tough to catch up on everything that IB Wave is doing. We were chatting earlier, there's a ton of different trends that are converging right now in That's cellular. Right. So I'm just kind of curious which ones you're tracking and how that translates into strategic priorities for IB Wave. Well, right now I would say the, the main priorities are uh, 5G and CBRS in the US that are the, the, the key trends that are, we're looking for. Uh, but 5G is an important one because uh, I think this year 5G in building will be uh, will be starting for real. Uh, last year 5G was deployed uh, mainly in stadiums uh, with macro uh, type of equipment. But this year it's going to be different. Uh, you're going to start seeing some equipment for in building specifically at low power that's going to allow to deploy in, a, in much more type of environment in building. So uh, so we want to make sure that we're there with the market to uh, to support. So as it relates to bringing 5G inside buildings, uh, you know, you mentioned stadiums in the U.S. Verizon's lit up a number using their yes. millimeter wave holdings. Millimeter wave has some challenging propagation characteristics if you're thinking about an outside-in approach to coverage, but in stadiums you have that kind of advantageous line of sight for your antennas. So how do we move from that type of venue deployment to something more traditional like a Class A commercial real estate or an airport right. or something like this? Well, for sure, 5G will add more challenges to the deployments. We've done some, some trials in building uh, already with some partners, and what we've learned so far is that uh, the design practices will have to change uh, because uh, things that were not really important in the past when it comes to planning may have a big impact. Uh, so we've realized, for example, that uh, just a white screen or a TV screen might have a huge impact on, re on the reflection of the signal and uh, have to be uh, taken into account as you do your design. Uh, so, uh, so the design practices for millimeter wave deployment will have to change. And uh, the other challenge will be the density of cells. So obviously at millimeter wave, you cannot cover uh, as much as what you do on sub six. Uh, and it will, it will bounce on different types of materials, so it will not propagate as much in, inside a venue. So, uh, so the cost of deployment might raise uh, quite a bit for millimeter wave. Uh, so for us, it's gonna be really to, to make sure we understand uh, th those challenges and we, uh, we, we continue to bring the tool set that will help people to deploy uh, millimeter wave in building. And you also mentioned CBRS. We've got uh, the priority uh, access license auction coming up, I think, in June tentatively. Right now, we just got through this initial commercial deployment phase where we're testing everything out. What are your expectations in terms of carrier adoption and then of enterprise adoption as we get closer to that PAL auction? We're, we're not completely sure at this stage. We're looking at how the market will, will evolve, but the dynamic will change definitely. So, uh, so with CBRS, uh, you might have some operators using it for, uh, for offload. You might have some neutral host providers uh, that might use it for, uh, to, to lower their cost of neutral host uh, systems, but also you're gonna have enterprises that will deploy their own system and they will want to, to control and deploy it on their own. Uh, so, so who's gonna deploy the most and uh, is, is still unclear. Uh, what's still unclear as well to us is what's gonna be the, the dynamic of, uh, of the deployments and approval of projects and so on. In, in cellular, it was very clear the operator were, uh, were controlling the quality and how the, the, the systems are deployed, but in CBRS, it might be democratized uh, quite a bit. Uh, so, so it's going it's, it's to allow new players to come in in the market and, uh, and do their own deployment. Uh, you're going to probably see more, uh, more control of the OEMs uh, for the deployments or more uh, flexibility for the OEMs to go directly to, to customers and sell their, uh, their CBRS equipment and, and help them deploy them uh, for their own needs. So we talked a little bit about 5G and millimeter wave frequencies. You mentioned some sub-6 deployments. We've got T-Mobile in the U.S. at 600 megahertz, for instance. Yeah. I'm kind of curious if we project this forward, and our paradigm is that eventually all frequencies will be 5G frequencies. And just to put an anecdotal against it, uh, a merged Sprint and T-Mobile with 600, 25, and millimeter wave holdings. When you go through your radio planning process for that, 
do you treat them individually? Do you plan for 600, plan for 25, and plan for millimeter wave, or do you take a holistic approach that looks at all the bands all at once? Well, the design will be done as one network, so you can, you can take a mix of equipment, put them together in the design, and, and create one single bill of material, one single documentation for all, all of these frequencies. But you still need to uh, meet the KPIs for all the different bands. Uh, so, so obviously the prediction at millimeter wave and, and sub-6 will not be the same. So, uh, so, so, so the design will, ha will still have to be done and to validate the KPIs at all bands. Okay, and Mark, I know you um, recently transitioned from a, a product role over to a business development role. I'm kind of curious how that fits in with IB Wave's larger strategy and what some of your priorities are as we uh, go into 2020. Sure. Well, first, um, one of the things we're looking at in 5G is, is obviously how the, the process of deployments will, uh, will evolve. And uh, uh, since the density of the network, especially at, at medium and a wave, will, uh, will grow, you're going to see a lot more, more cells we need to keep the cost of deployment uh, as low as possible. And the way to do that will be to, uh, to automate uh, uh, um, as, more, as much as possible uh, into the process. But the one other way is to work with partners, uh, such as collection tool vendors, OEMs, and, and others to, to find ways to, to streamline every step and exchange of information and collaboration aspect uh, of it. So, so we, uh, we're still going to continue to focus on in-building uh, design, but we know that we're, uh, we're a part of the, of the whole process and we need to make sure that we, uh, we work with the other players in the industry to, uh, to offer uh, the, best, uh, the, the best processes possible for our common customers. So it sounds like the bottom line here, whether it's a carrier network, a private network, whether it's millimeter wave or sub six, you got to start with a strong foundation of radio planning. That's right. It's going to be even even more important than it was before because a lot of the the communication, wireless communication, are business critical now. Uh, so so it's going to be extremely important that you you do a good planning to get the the KPIs and the and and the fruit of uh, of. Uh, of, of the network that you're looking for. Well, Mark, I really appreciate you taking the time to share your perspective and tell us a little bit about the work IB Wave's doing. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much.